Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's episode, I'm going to be styling my entire living room area with plants. Now, a little bit of a history because I actually moved into this house about four or five months ago. It's been crazy. It's been under renovation for a long time and a lot of the plants suffered. A lot of plants have died. Please do check out my previous videos if you want to see how I rescue them, save them and propagate them. And I've prepared a lot of my plants from the beginning to be styled indoors. So there's actually been a bit of effort put in a few months ago. So we are going to see some of the plants today that are available to be up on display. Some of them are still on the way. They're still not ready yet. This means that some of the plants will live here part time and sometimes it will live in the back where I have a little greenhouse. It's actually a little backyard and it's super tiny. So I could not fit too many plants in there or I could chuck them up in the front yard where it gets a little bit of direct sunlight. So these plants are going to be in rotation. The styling process is going to be ongoing. So I'm going to be enjoying different styling of plants throughout the year. Got myself a glass of red wine. So I'm going to be a little bit tipsy at work today. Mm, that is amazing. This is actually very, very nice. It's like very grapey. It's a little bit sweet without being overwhelming. Uh, Jacob's Creep, Shiraz, Cabernet. But holiday seasons are upon us and I want to wish you guys happy holidays. And for those of you who are celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. Let's just get this video started. I'm standing at the kitchen now and these are some gifts for people that I know. Uh, these are from my brand Seven Sages. They're bar soaps. So in case you live in Indonesia and you want to order I'm shamelessly advertising myself, but this is the space that we've got to work with That's like uh, a little dining area here. We're not gonna do much in the kitchen So it's a bit messy here with the lighting set up over there. It's a bit messy here We're not gonna touch the kitchen, but we're gonna be touching this whole area here as you can see there are actually many potential for plants and a lot of areas for plants. There's a nice shelf over there. There's a propagating philodendron anderson there that shouldn't be there. It should actually go into soil. And then this beautiful shelf here, which is my centerpiece. So I wanted this area to be nice enough for me to vlog in. So there's going to be a lot of nice plants dressed around here. And of course, there's this little, I don't even know if this is a platform or whatever, where I can have some plants that is south facing this means that it's getting really really strong direct sunlight now and then come june the sun will be behind us on the other side so this is getting a bit of direct sunlight along this window so this area is going to be really really brightly lit these days and then there's also this small area here this awkward area. yeah this is my mom she's coming anytime now to pick up her presents and these are the the, the soaps that we're sending off so yeah I'm really happy that we are doing quite okay this holiday season. So we've got this rubber tree hanging out here. I actually uh, discovered this by accident. I was away, I was sick, and the girls were moving these, this plant around because like, it was just an elephant in the room. So they just chucked it here during the renovation, and you know what, it works. It looks really, really beautiful there. And by the way, I have a uh, mirror here, which doubles the space, and that goes upstairs. But we're not going to do the upstairs area today. And just so you know, we'll be doing a full house tour next week in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. And there's this really weird contraption. I hate how it looks, but it's for mosquitoes. So you can see it's imprisoned a lot of mosquitoes in there. I can insert a link if you live in Indonesia. I can show you where I bought it from. But if you live overseas, unfortunately, I don't know the brand or where you can buy this from. But yeah, it's, uh, it's caught a lot of mosquitoes. So yeah, this is the overall look of the space. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get started. And this is my little backyard area. It's about three meters by five meters and it's raining. So you can hear the pitter patter of the rain. Quite a wonderful sound. But these are the plants that we have working to work with today. And then these are the plants that are fixed to the green wall. So we can't really touch these. We, they are kind of permanent installation. Although if we really, really want to, we could because all these pots they, are, they can be taken off from the wall. So if you want to see how I created this wall, I have a video on that. I'm going to link that up above. But there are some really, really wonderful plants here. We're going to do a tour maybe at some point along this, uh, for this wall. But today, we're going to be primarily looking at the plants that we can actually bring indoors. Like all these calatheas can actually be brought indoors. Sorry, it's very messy here because we're working every day. We're rescuing plants every day. So things are in disarray. This one was burnt. It was crisp up. It was out in direct sunlight that we will rehab this here and I think it will do just fine. There's a cute little African violet here. It's done blooming, but it was so beautiful actually a few weeks ago, but now all the blooms have died. So 
This area is basically reserved for me to keep rehabilitating plants. There's some beautiful Lea amabilis. Uh, to rehab plants here, and then when they are ready, I can bring them inside and then uh, have them grow. To be honest, the conditions indoors in my living area is actually quite good. The, the light, the airflow is quite good. The watering is a little bit more difficult to get to, but we, we can manage. So yeah, these are all the plants that we have to work with. And just to remind you guys, I lost about half of my plant collection during the move. It's a really, really uh, stressful move for not just me, but also for the plants. Beautiful Apishkia. Yeah, this is definitely going inside. So it's been a really, really stressful move and uh, a lot of plants didn't make it, unfortunately. But this means I can probably buy more plants and also I can s more sustainably care for them. Like, because I honestly, I had way too many plants before. And by the way, we're also gonna be looking at some cover pots for these plastic pots because I have a lot of them. Uh, let me quickly show you some of them. These are uh, <laughs> under my couch. A lot of them and this represents only about 10% of my pot collection so we're gonna be dressing these up we're gonna be styling them up into really nice pots we're upstairs in my bedroom and these are some of my other cover pots here it's insane I gotta give a lot of them away because there's too much of them and then way up there that's covered in pots Wow, but I don't know if I want to touch these they look so good up here these terracotta pots, they can also work well as cover pots. And I believe I, oh my God, I have a lot more down here. More pots. Uh, they're actually taking up way too much space. This could have been space for plants because this, are, this is getting really good light, this shelf. So yeah, I have a pot hoarding problem, I think. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that we have this wall feature where plants are coming out, oh, that light needs to be fixed. It's like falling over. But yeah, there's this feature where we need to correct it. We need to style it properly because literally when I moved here, I just chucked all these pots of plants here and just let, left them as it is. So this is gonna be another episode for another day, even though it is part of the living room. So yeah, it's kind of a nice continuity to have like all these trailing plants coming down from here. And I wanted to also show you that this light, these, and the studio lights these are on every day uh, at nine o'clock and then they shot off at around 6 p.m this will provide much needed light for all of the plants that are going to be living in this living room and this cute table here I forgot to mention that there's a few areas here where i can keep some plants and then that is south facing window so we're gonna get some light coming in from there some wonderful natural light it's actually one raining but it's also like what time is it now it's like 5 p.m so the sun is actually down already but in the daytime this is actually very bright and there's another area here with a little bit of light coming in and hang on let me come around that's actually the backyard and as you can see some lights actually do come in from there in the daytime as well and a little bit more artificial light here and there and this will supplement the plants with food because plants absolutely need light so if you're living indoors you want to have your plants living indoors in a meaningful way you're going to need to give them light excellent light but not not so much to, as to burn them for example this light here if i had a plant sitting this close to the light it will probably fry the leaves so uh, any light bulb will do i know that there are many fancy grow lights grow lights are also wonderful in a way that they make be conserving energy because it's the right amount of uh, light wavelength is that what the word for it is it's basically going to be efficient for plants photosynthesis but any light all of my light bulbs here are not grow lights they will do they will work plants are not that picky as long as you have the right intensity and you have the the general wavelength that they can absorb and consume as food and then you also want to make sure that your living area is nicely ventilated. There's a little bit of drafts coming in in the daytime. And then there's some air conditioning as well. So it's never like sweltering hot in here, but it's never too cold at the same time. Over the course of the next few months or years, we'll be talking a lot about plant care indoors as well as outdoors, of course. So stay tuned for that. This is my front yard. And actually there's this plant, the Syngonium Wendlandii. That is super cute. It's got some paint on it because we were painting the ceiling, but it's okay. This will recover. And there are a lot of plants here, but they 
tend to be more direct sun loving plants. So I'm just gonna take this one in and see how it can live. It's actually living under the monstera, getting way too little light before. So let's see if I can find it better conditions inside. It's so beautiful though, look at that. And I've been needing to use this Padetta radiatum. It's an anthurium. Ah, okay. So what happened with this plant is that the older leaves, this was from my old home. It was very, very infected by bacteria and fungus because these are what the spots are. You could cut the leaf off, but in my case, I don't. But then these are the new leaves that have come in and they're okay. Look at that new leaf, it's okay. But this plant really, really loves the flower. It keeps putting out flowers that I keep cutting off. I don't know if you can hear me against all this rain, but yeah, I think this is gonna do fine. But I do like that this has got really nice shaped leaves, a statement piece. So what I'm gonna do is, I hope this is not too jittery for you guys. I'm gonna film with one hand while I, while I get my work done. But what I wanted to do is have it by the window. So it's kind of like facing outside. Now, most of you guys would intuitively put your plants like so, where the plant is facing us. But in truth, the plant will always go towards the light. They want to face the light. They want to get as much light as possible. So I'm gonna just help it along by rotating it towards the light. This philodendron mayo eye is actually very, very cute. Super cute. Look at that new leaf. I think that's to another plant living in here. But the only problem is the pot. Like it's an odd shaped pot, but let me find a cover pot for it. Now this begonia lady's finger, this is huge and it's doing really well, but it's chucked in this corner here. So let me see if maybe I can find a space indoors for it. Begonias hate to be moved. So I've got to be careful about this one. Now this different box here, I think it's ready to be displayed. It's uh, cut it recently. So basically what I did was, I took a lot of cuttings from this. Like I cut this here. Where else did I cut? I can't see. But basically this was many plants and I just cut and stuck the top cutting back into the soil. So now we've got a huge full pot of these because when I bought this, this was only one single vine. So in a nice cover pot, this will look amazing. And at some point I will have to repot this into a slightly bigger pot, but it is now looking very cute. So it's going inside. Look at the pop of color that it's gonna provide. Definitely, Paparomia crucifolia. They're really, really good for indoors. Got this Maranta Loconoria Lemon Lime. This is not doing so well. It's seen better days. But I think it's growing new leaves, new leaves. And I've got another duplicate down there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to grow this indoors because they can actually do well in medium to low light. Looking cute already. Look at the selection that we have. Find a cute little skin dapsis. I think this is the Silver Splash. It's already pretty long. So I might have this on a shelf. This is kind of cute, but I don't really know because first of all, there's two vines living in this pot. Uh, this is a philodendron mame, by the way, and it's still pretty juvenile, but let me put it on the table and then let's see, let's have this as an option. This will actually grow pretty big, but it needs more time. Now I have a dilemma here. This is a Scandapsus coriaceus over here, and this is a Hoya carnosa, and they look a little bit similar. And I'm figuring out, I think I can only choose one because they have very similar appearance. This one's already living in a nice cute little pot here. So I might actually deal with this Carnoso instead. And this Carnosa may need to be fertilized a little bit because it's getting small leaves. Their leaves are supposed to be much bigger than this. But then they can flower when given good conditions. So yeah, I'm gonna have this indoors, I think. Yeah, sorry for, for this skin dapsis, coriaceous. Oh yeah, this plant is definitely going on my living room. It's gonna be this nice statement piece. I showed this in my uh, last week's episode. I asked for the plant ID. Hopefully someone will have it by then. But it was sold to me as a hosta, but this is probably not a hosta. And it's doing really, really well. So I really wanna move it out here. This grew foliage within the last two to three months. And I think this is a plant that doesn't want to dry out completely. Look at how glorious this is. All right, so I've piled up the plants here that are available. Keep in mind, we're working with limited plants. If I was doing like a project, I was doing, I don't know, in my ideal situation, I would have more selection than this. But this is all that I have to work with in the condition that I'm living in now. Hopefully I have more plants to add to my collection after this. But there's one thing that I want to check on, this. 
This is a philodendron brantianum and it's already become very bushy, but I think it's become way too bushy. Look at that. And the new leaves are actually super tiny. This is actually a cute leaf. Look at this one. It's so compact and little and the pattern are also more compact. They can actually get a lot bigger than this if you let them trail up or climb up something. But yeah, look at that. It's super tiny. So I'm guessing this is a little bit too pot bound. I'm going to check on the roots. And also this is a cute pot for the Brantian because it's got like this nice gray on gray action. But let me show you. Uh, this pot actually, I can move it up to one pot size bigger than this. So this uh, plant can root a little bit better. Take off some dead leaf. But moment of truth, let's see how the roots look like in there. It's not terribly root bound actually. This is not so bad. It's not bad at all. But I think it's definitely way too many plants in one little pot like this. I'm going to increase the pot size. And I think one probable explanation for this could be that it's getting too little light. That's why it's giving me smaller and smaller leaves. Or maybe it just it's a plant that really wants to climb. It doesn't want to trail. That's also a possibility because I do see that there's a lot of slow release fertilizer here. All the round pellets you see are slow release. So this is not devoid of nutrients by any means. All right, I did find a pot that's a perfect size for it. Let me move this in here. And then I'm going to add potting mix. Now, Brantianum, I would generally recommend the, the Aeroid potting mix would have been perfect for the Brantianum because it is an epiphyte. But in my case, because there's so much of it like living in the same pot, I wanted to retain a little bit more moisture. So I'm giving them a general pot purpose potting mix with cocoa peat perlite, burnt rice hull, and a bit of worm casting. And this will also mean that I will have to water this a little bit less than before, which is a good thing. I don't want to be watering my plants every day in my indoor plant care, si in my indoor situation. And there you go. And this will fit right in here. All right, I think I'm just going to get started. I don't even know how to begin. I guess the logical thing would be to use like the larger ones first and then Work my way down. Work my way down from there. This is really, really cute, this plant. Let me see if this will look good over here. Now there's a fern living in this pot. Don't like this pot on with this fern. So let's see. Uh, there's an emidrium, Zippolianum living back there. And I don't know how I feel. This very similar vibes with the Amidrium. They're both like finger like. Sorry, I'm like filming from super far away, but I just need to get this done. So I'm going to just leave the camera there and you're going to watch me from way over there. If that's okay with you. I hope it's okay. Uh, yeah, this is very similar. I don't think I like that at all. I don't like that one bit. So I might actually put this over here on this side. Okay, and this might do well over here. Oh, hang on. Maybe down here would be better. Okay, so I gotta figure out what to put way back there. Do -do -do. All right, this, I'm gonna figure out, I have a, a few cover pots up down here and I, I'm, I'm gonna figure out the cover pot situation much later on because right now I'm really more concerned about like aesthetics. That's not bad, not bad at all. I might actually move this vine. I don't know if I'm in frame. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. And yeah, that might do well like that. This is that philodendron Anderson. I'm gonna quickly show you some root porn here. Ta -da. Oh yeah, you could not see me in frame, but that was shooting that plant way up there before. You know, that skin dapsis. So let me back this up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this is a, a good idea to shoot like this because I, I just don't know. <laughs> but I gotta get this done. I've been procrastinating. I've been doing, meaning to shoot this episode a long time ago. I never got around to do it because again, I'm waiting for the plants to get better to recover. This is aglonema over here. So this can get 
uh, can provide a pop of color anywhere. They do need it bright. To pr produce this bright foliage, they need to... Actually, I, quite, I don't know how I feel about having that here. I actually don't mind it here. This is not so bad. But I have to style something below that. And I have a feeling this might be good. Yeah, that might be good over here. The syngonium or... Yeah, maybe here to cover the trunk. The bare trunk of the anthurium. Pedata radiatum. This might be cute over here. But it will be living under this plant and it's probably not getting ideal light. But let me see how I feel about that later on. Now I do wish a lot of these plants were bigger. This is the philodendron mommy. When it gets big and pillowy leaves, I would really like them to be looking outside. So sometimes people can probably see it from the street level. Yeah, it's way too small for, for now. But I'm, I might leave it here. I might leave it here just, just to let it acclimatize and see what happens. Yeah. Again, I'm really, really strapped with plants. I don't have a lot to work with. Hugo peperomia. Maybe over here. Ooh, and I don't know if I'm, I did mention this earlier, but I might actually be vlogging from here. I might sit down over there, nice and comfy with plants behind me. And I guess I'm not shooting at the right, at the perfect angle, am I? Sorry. I don't know what you guys have been staring at for the last few minutes, but I'll show you what it looks like after. So don't worry about it. But I really feel like I do need more plants. Maybe I, I'm, I've been thinking about shopping, which is a bad idea because one, I was just complaining that I have way too many plants and not enough time to take care of my plants. So shopping may not be such a good idea right now. Hmm. Yeah, this is really sad. Hang on. I need to like, I need to like add more plants. There's definitely this is syngonium variegated over here. In my mind, there's like, it's way more dense than this. Oh, and I have a little contraption here where I keep some water propagation happening. This is getting pretty good light. So, yeah, but I do feel like I, it's a little bit too bare for now. It's going to look a little bit different when we have the cover pots. So, yeah, this one might look good over here. Yeah, this little fern. It's in a big pot. This pot is way too big for it. So I might give it a different pot. For example, like this. This actually looks a lot better. Better now. See that? This and here. And it's gonna get a lot more bushy. This is still putting out fronds after fronds. So yeah, I'm gonna put this somewhere else. Somewhere, maybe even behind here might be good. This is actually looking a little bit sad. Just a little bit sad. This is a Dracaena and it actually likes very bright light, but it's so scorched by almost full sun outside. So it, it needs to recover. And this can become a little tree, actually. It can get a little bit bigger. And it can stand uh, me like medium light because this was living in my parents' wardrobe before, before I propagated it. So maybe I'll have it chucked back there for a little bit where it's getting kind of like medium light. Uh, I don't have a cover pot this big, uh, so I don't know how I'm gonna cover that, but let me see. This, this is ugly, you know, I try to, whenever I have a plastic pot, I will do my best to have it be co covered by something. Like ideally, maybe like a big, like woven basket like this would be really good, but this is still too small for it. So let me figure this out. This is not, I'm, I've placed this here because this, this plant here has a bare trunk. So I'm trying to give it like a more fuller look. There's a cyanestrum 
cordifolium living back here. It was scorched. It completely crisped up in direct sunlight. So I moved it in here and it's been doing really well since it's been putting out a lot of new vines. It's got really, really wonderful foliage. I don't know if I'm in frame. There, it's got really, really wonderful foliage. And the variegated ones of these are absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna chuck this back there, but it's gonna get, I don't know, let me see. Maybe I'll do this. Yeah, you know what, I'll do that for the Ethereum. And I might chuck this a little bit on the front here. Or down here with the Diefenbachia because it's got really nice pop of color right there in the center. Yeah, I quite like this already. This is looking a little bit better. But again, keep in mind, we do need to dress the pots. Now I've been meaning to do this for a very long time and now's my chance to do it. But you see back there, there's a Ripsalis living up on this top shelf. And guess what? This shelf is going away. I am redoing the shelf because it didn't make sense. It came with a developer and I finally bit the bullet and said, I'm gonna do my own shelving that's gonna suit my, my daily needs. So that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be changing the shelving units. Okay, and this will, oh my God. <laughs> All right, tipsy, getting tipsy here. This is gonna live here and it's doing really well actually. Uh, up on that shelf, it's been living there for two months. It's put out like really, really cool new glossy leaves everywhere. But this is so beautiful when you let it trail off to the side. I don't know how this will look, but a different back here. Let me come back around here. Actually, this does not look very good. Not very good at all. Hang on, let me style this a bit. Give me a minute. Let me get to it. Okay. All right. Okay, so I moved the Dracaena a little bit off to the side, a little bit more. Because this Dracaena is going to continuously grow upwards, and that's the space right here where the trunk can go up to. But it needs more time, and it's doing really well because it was actually not growing for the last few months or year even in my old home. It's doing well now. Let me see, I'm missing one more thing over there. And I wish there was like a ledge behind this couch where I can put a row of plants and maybe I could put like a row of lighting underneath this shelf. That would be really amazing. But let's not go overboard today. I really do think we need to keep things simple and I don't want to spend any more money. But it looks a little bit bare, doesn't it? Like that corner over there, it needs something. And there, that, corn, that needs something over here. So I'm going to go look around my place for more plants. All right, so I've picked up some more contenders or victims. I don't know how you would call these. But yeah, and then there's some ferns, cute ferns that I brought from outside. Actually, these ferns were getting a little bit too scorched. These are sunburn on the leaves, sunburn on the leaves. So I guess I would, they would appreciate living indoors from here. Oh my God, I'm on my third glass of wine, you guys. I don't know how I'm still standing, but. All right, let me do this area first. It seems to be a bit easier to work with. I've got this Cissus Amazonica. Let me see if this will look okay over here. Perhaps it's putting out some really, really crazy runners. Maybe it's not getting enough. Oh, I do like this uh, kind of intertwined with this Scandapsis. It looks really beautiful. It's got really nice silver on silver action going on. I don't mind it at all. There's a seashell here and there's a little bit of a like a box back here. Let me see. Okay. Something tells me this begonia would look really good. Really good back here. Yep, hell yeah. 
sometimes we need to back away to see how they look but yeah it does need something else it needs another plant below that and i'm guessing maybe this tenanti burla marks yeah this actually looks really good down here i might cut off this vine here this vine is a bit too unruly oops sorry it's not doing well anyways these leaves were a little bit infected so they're not doing so well anyways it would look really nice when we give it a nice cover pot actually but this is needs to be layered a bit okay there we go i still don't have a plant over there let me see maybe this Oh my gosh, this Syngonium might do well for here for a bit of height. It does need a bit of a height and something else. Let me see. Maybe this Apischia. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, it just needs a little something that's like a little bit more of a height back there. But you know what? This is all that I have to work with for now. And I, it's not like I can run out and buy a gazillion plants right now. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And I know for sure that these plants will do quite okay here, given their light intensity that they need. I might actually just chuck this philodendron cutting over here. That's okay. It's not going to bother anybody. Not at all, I think. Let me see. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's doing all right there. I'm a little bit concerned with that table. It looks a little bit weird and bare. Uh, let me see. I might actually move that aglonema away. Let me move that aglonema away. Let me put this, maybe this Hoya up here. Okay, maybe this can take a centerpiece somehow. Styling is actually pretty hard work because your mind is always like envisioning ooh, envisioning things like placements and things like that. It's very tiring. But also I think that alcohol <laughs> is really working its way through my body. Okay, let's see this fern over here. And this might be something that I move around every few like months or so. And if I see something declining, I would actually move it away. This peperomia might be a little bit too, this peperomia actually likes it very bright. And I think I don't even know if I can have it on this ledge. I mean, it's weird on its own, but if this ledge was covered in like a row of plants, it might be very nice. But I'm gonna leave this here for now. This, this peperomia closifolia, this will actually stun stress really well when it, gets really good light it can become a little bit reddish and that's a beautiful look on them let me put this back here oh my gosh this heavy <laughs> heavy terracotta pot oh my gosh okay i think i think i might be okay with this arrangement for now I've got a dark begonia Okay, where would this go? Hang on. This is too dark for it. This actually needs bright and dark light. This is a begonia black mamba. Let me see, that's actually okay. That's not so bad. Let me see, am I concerned for anybody here? This might actually look good over here. This syngonium, it needs a lot of light. It needs a lot of light or else it's going to revert to green. It's a variegated syngonium podophyllum. This is a Calathea mosaica that I think, let me see. 
Yeah, it looks okay over here actually. It looks all right. And you do want to water it a bit less when it's getting less light than before. And there's a Calathea here. It's recovering. It's put out some new leaves. It's a Calathea Majestica Princeps. That's the name for it. And it's very spider mites prone. Extremely spider mites prone. Let me see how it looks. Yeah, I don't mind it there. This looks amazing. But I do want to rotate it so the leaves are facing the sun. I know it's a controversial idea, but trust me, they actually do fare a lot better when they're facing the sun. I know it doesn't look as good in our space. We want the plants to be facing us, but unfortunately, they're much happier facing the sun. Now here's that Camphoria, which I earlier said is not ready yet, but this I'm experimenting this in lower light and also indoors. I have a duplicate one that is grown in really, really bright indirect light. So I'm trying to see which one is going to give me that patterned leaf. And I think the last one, I'm just going to do this last one here. This is an Anthurium Vachii hybrid. And let me step back and look. This is okay. I'm actually kind of okay with this for now, you guys. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, but it looks much better than before and I can start vlogging here and I can start caring for them indoors. And actually, my outdoor area is now very, very bare. Look at that, it's empty now, we cleared it out. There's a lot of Calatheas that are rehabbing, so I'm gonna organize that later on. But then it's becoming a little bit uh, more sparse, which is good. I'm gonna start organizing this better because it's actually very uh, clumped. It's very, very cluttered earlier. So yeah, I'm gonna start living with this for now. Like this situation, I think I'm okay. This is not perfect by any means. I may move things around in the next few days or so, but I will give you a tour tomorrow. We're losing daylight now. So I'm gonna give you a tour tomorrow when it's nice and bright and sunny to show you like the actual amount of light that these plants are getting in the hottest part of the day. Ooh, and I'm also going to take my time to uh, give them cover pots. I'm going to style around now with the cover pots, but I'm not going to show you that. I don't think people are interested in the thought process of cover pots, but you might see different styling tomorrow because I may actually even move things around quite a bit. But yeah, let me finish the wine and then I'm going to start dressing this up and I'll see you tomorrow in the daytime. It is the end of the day and I wanted to show you the nighttime view of the space. I quite like it. I've been moving a lot of things around and I put everything in cover pots. We're going to look at it in detail in the morning, but look at this. I'm quite liking this. Imagine all that were empty before. And I really like the centerpiece. There's a Dracaena white aspen and an aglonema. That's like a little centerpiece here and it's lit up by this light bulb and I can actually change the color of that light bulb. It's a smart light bulb by Philips, not sponsored by any means, but I'm kind of obsessed with these light bulbs. You can go with themes, you can go like really green, you can go under the water, you can have bright vibrant reds, candlelight, all kinds of mood light with that light bulb. So I'm really, really happy with that. And that is a beautiful centerpiece that I'm gonna enjoy for a while. So yeah, this is my night view. It's actually pretty romantic here, even though I do live alone but I'm enjoying this ambiance. Imagine maybe a little candle going on or two candles going on at night. I may actually install some fairy lights too, but I think that might be a bit too much. But yeah, I'm enjoying this. That's my reflection. Yeah, we need to clean that glass. It's really, really dirty. But yeah, that's it for tonight. I guess we will continue. Oh, and I, leave, I left a little trail here because we do need to come out to access that balcony from here. So I'm going to leave that bit there and I also quite like it. Originally I had this whole space filled with just plant, filled to the brim. And I really like it much better that there's a bit of negative space here to kind of break the space apart. So yeah, now some propagations are going to happen there. I'm going to add more propagations because we're going to be filming some propagation videos, FYI. So yeah, I'm going to bid you guys good night and I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, so this is the third day and the final update. 
I'm actually upstairs looking down below. This is what it looks like down there. I'm beginning to enjoy this. And then let me come down the stairs. We're gonna see a whole house tour video in, in the next week, I believe, during the 1st of January. But I'm gonna give you guys a peek here. This is from the stairs coming down. This is what I see when I'm coming down the stairs. And voila, this is our work. It took three days to complete. I have a feeling it's gonna take a lot faster to maintain and swap things around when I have to. But for now, this is where they will be. Let me give you a quick tour. This is a Dracaena here. I called this a Ripsalis a few days ago, but this is an Epiphyllum and it flowers very, very often for me. A Pischia over here. This is another angle to shoot from that I really like. Coming down and panning over like that. Look at how beautiful and glorious the sky is. Anyways, back to our tour. This is the Philodendron Anderson that I kept in this water propagation. There's a fern living back there. The Philodendron Brantianum, Epipremnum Cebu Blue. This is an Apischia. I really love this little pot that is here. So I have not cleaned up yet. So the girls are coming in uh, on Monday and they're gonna clean up everything. There is a nice shelving unit with some plants. It's a bit scraggly now, but give it time to fill out the space. This is an interesting Cissus Amazonica. It's very, very viney. Begonia maculata. That's reverted. I think it's getting too much light. That's why it's become all green. And then a Tenante Burla Marks. This is an Anthurium Vecii hybrid. But this new leaf is looking okay and the older leaves are a little bit tethered. This was living outside. It was abused really badly in the rain. The cats were playing amongst it and it was also sunburned at some point. It was living in direct sunlight. It's, as you can see, the leaves are torn. This is caused by the wind and the move. But as this recover, I think this will do really beautiful here. And I have a feeling the leaves will start turning over towards the window instead of facing us. But that's okay. I'm just gonna let it do its own thing. This is a Hoya pubicalic splash. This is what happens when you over... Oh, there might be... I don't know what this is, by the way, guys. Feel free to comment down below. This seemed to be like a spider that is predatory. It may feed on like your pest because every time I see this, the plant did not decline. But correct me if I'm wrong, a comment down below if you know what this is. But I have a feeling this is not a pest that is detrimental to the plant's health. But anyways, Hoya pubicalic splash this is a sign of burn, too much light. And then back here, Amidrium zippelianum. And I really do like that this is making ways like a little corridor outside. Uh, maidenhair fern here, a lot of water propagation. This will increase in the next few days because I'm, I'm going to be filming a lot of videos. Oh my god, and this is so fun. This is an aglonema that I rescued. I keep overwatering it, I keep losing foliage and I put it in soil and then it dies back and then it does this again. So this is like my third or fourth time rescuing this plant. Aglonemas hate water, which is why they're not good for me. Uh, beautiful fern here in the corner, filling up the space. I added a tall calatea. This is a Majestica princeps. It was battling, uh, this is overwatering. This is a sign of overwatering because you see crisping with a bit of yellow line. It's also had spider mites, but it's now doing better. These are the new leaves that's coming out. So once this fills out, I think this will do okay. That philodendron mommy hanging out back there, filling out the space. This is a philodendron mayoi, this is dark foliage area. This is a syngonium windlandii, peperomia. Clusifolia, this is a begonis, two begonis living in one pot. This is the Arabian sunset. Can't remember what this one is, but they're different in case you can't tell. There's a begonia black mamba. And then the centerpiece here, which I filmed last night, the aglonema. And then this is the Dracaena white aspen. I put here like a, a touch of lemony green. I might actually add some more plants that is a bit more lemony in this area. This is a Maranta, this is a Diefenbachia. Cyanestrum cordifolium, this is a Camphiria back there, Calathea mosaica, and this is the Pedato radiatum. I decided to face us. Look at how cute that reflection is for this plant. And then this is that alleged hosta plant. I'm still waiting on a plant ID for this. And this begonia I decided to chuck here. And as you can see, everybody's in their little cover pot. Let me quickly show you one just in case you're curious. This is what the, in the inside looks like. It looks so much better when you have it in a pot. And this is super cute too, in this little pot. 
So I have so many of these pots and I'm a hoarder of cover pots and they really really come in handy. This is a African violet and it's not doing well. I think it was a little bit sunburned. This is bleached leaves as you can see and the top leaves look a little bit bleached. So I moved it here in bright indirect light and I gave it a cute little planter. These guys they do recover really well in my experience and this used to flower for me and yeah I'm just gonna let it recover and then it's gonna do so well. This is cute too. There's a sensevieria here in a little or Dracaena if you want to be that guy. Yeah in a little pot here. This is Ikea if I'm not wrong. So yeah, this is this is what I have for now. Very very happy with that look. I really like looking at this having some of the plants indoors, some of the plants outdoors and they become a cohesive space. And this is accidental. I did not plan on there being a balcony out there when I got this place. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope that you guys are doing well. Happy holidays. I know it's like New Year's Eve tomorrow if I'm not wrong. And stay warm for those of you living in the, state, in the United States, in Europe, and for those of you living in Asia, well, you're gonna be warm anyways. But I hope your plants are doing well and I will see you in the next one. Thank you again for watching this. Bye bye guys.